Israelis. Ongoing Israeli siege of Al-Aqsa Mosque has once again brought to the forefront the Palestinian dispute. Israeli decision to evict Palestinian families from certain neighborhoods of East Jerusalem has led to escalation of tensions and has raised concern over continued Israeli occupation of Palestine amidst increasing trend of Arab-Israel normalization. To talk on this issue, we today have with us Mr. Muslim bin Akil. Mr. Muslim bin Akil is an international admiralty and maritime lawyer and holds an LLM. He is well-known advocate of high courts and vibrant vocal about legal education reforms in Pakistan. He's also a research associate at Maritime uh, Study Forum, Islamabad. He is currently serving at National Defense University, Islamabad as visiting faculty member of international law and contemporary studies. He has earlier served as various national and international organization in various capacities. A very warm welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much, Mariam, for just giving me uh, such a warm welcome and such a detailed uh, introduction and uh, inviting me for such an imminent topic of for the contemporary studies and the international relations that has been faced uh, as an atrocity by the Muslims of Palestine and needs to be highlighted at the time. Thank you very much for having me on board. So what is wider Arab-Israel conflict and what are the other key issues of the conflict? And what is your take on this conflict? First of all, before I answer your question, I would uh, uh, like to give my opinion, my point of view about the situation, ongoing situations in the Palestine. My take on the situation of Palestine is very clear to all the Muslim uh, nations across the globe. If Palestine falls, remember this, this is a very grave and intense situation that the world is seeing today and uh, from the 26th of Ramadan, that if Palestine falls, we will not be able to protect Medina. Remember it. God forbid, we'll lose Makkah. And if Makkah falls, we'll lose the Kaaba. And Kaaba is the honor, dignity, pride, purpose of the life for all the Muslims. And we cannot give up on these. And uh, as far as the United Nations are concerned, they must take notice on as soon as, as possible basis. Otherwise, the retaliation from the Muslim world would definitely come and it would be grave and obvious. It would be hard to be controlled by the West and its allies, and especially the perpetrators. And I urge the world to stop the Israel from the barbaric oppression on the innocent Muslims of Palestine. And... Uh, since we are going through the pandemic and the world has seen this term pandemic for the very first time, uh, at, at least if I'm talking about myself in 112 years, so is the case with you and all our audience and the viewers who are listening to our and watching to our program, then there would be the world that the world would face that would be endemic. So it is a very grave concern. As far as uh, uh, your question about the wider Israeli conflict is concerned, there are uh, some key points that uh, must be uh, highlighted and must be known before we are uh, getting to the question. Uh, for example, that is the origin. The origin of the Palestine problem as is an international issue that lie in the events occurring towards the end of the First World War, World War I. These events led to the League of Nations decision to place Palestine under the administration of the Great Britain as the mandatory power to under the mandate system adopted by the League. In principle, mandate was meant to be in the nature of transitory phase until Palestine attained the status of a fully independent nation, a status provisionally recognized by in the Leagues of Covenants. But in fact, the mandate's historical evolution didn't result in the emergence of the Palestine as an individual independent nation. The decision of the mandate did not take it, took into account the wishes of the people of the Palestine. And this is a very important thing when we are talking about the Israel and Palestine conflict. And when we are having a discussion about the Palestine and the Israel, there is a word that is very much commonly used that is a clash. The word is never clash because clash occurs between the two equal opponents. They are not equal, either militarily or either resourcefully, they are not equal. It is oppression, it is utter oppression that has been taken uh, place. And uh, when we are talking about the covenants requirement that the wishes of these communities must be the principal consideration in the selection of the mandatory when we are going to talk about the establishment of the Palestinian state. 
So uh, these things are very important. There are multiple key issues of the conflict that encompass a number of aspects. For example, when we are talking about anything, just remember that it is always the historical perspective that is going you uh, that is going to give you the insight about the contemporary problem that why it actually originated. The historic the historical causes are complex, so it is important to consider the factors when defining the complex factors that led to the conflict. Number one, that is the territorial and the historical claims that are being made, uh, the claims of the Palestinian Arabs and the Jews on the same grounds and the different uh, interpretations of the history of these areas that these, these lands belong to whom. Because uh, this is going to be uh, a very vast topic and because of the limited time we have to sum it up. So I'm going to just give you the bullets and a, a brief introduction about each of the salient feature. The second is, the law of the international community, the failure to comply with the parties making the UN and the other international organization. Politics at the international level is another important factor that stages uh, the interest manifested uh, in the various centers of the world power in catalyzing the conflict. That uh, when, the, when this conflict is catalyzed, there are other incentives that are harvested uh, through these kinds of uh, um, uh, conflicts uh, that arise in the world history or the international relations. The other is the election power in Israel, the right-wing powers, tightened Israeli strands, the extremist Islamic groups, their, their, their perception about the refusal to accept the Israel's right to exist at the very least and to engage the terrorist acts. They claim that uh, the Muslims are behind the terrorist, uh, ter terrorist invasions in uh, Israel and they want to keep it safe. Number, uh, uh, like uh, moving ahead, there is a deadlock in resolving the refugee crisis that is one of the main and the most important since none of the solutions are acceptable to both sides of the conflict. Like for the amicable dispute resolution, uh, there must be an amicable event. But when we are looking at the Israeli and the Palestinians conflict, then you see that there is a deadlock in uh, sorting out the refugee crisis. Water resources is another important thing that uh, most of the people must uh, be vague about and uh, they must not, uh, not be considering it as a major uh, fault or the major point, but there is a fault line of the water resources and in the areas they are being depleted. So uh, when we are talking about the climate change, the water, uh, water reservoirs, uh, sa saving all the water, they think that uh, they are the burden over to the resources of the Israelis and uh, they think themselves as, as a nation that has been gifted or uh, that has been the favorite child of the God. Uh, talking about the Muslim Arabs, Arabs said nobody included in the plan for the reestablishment of the Jews in Arab and uh, how can uh, we take the Arab without asking them? So uh, this is my point, yeah. So what is a two-state solution, a Palestinian state alongside um, an independent Jewish state or next to the state of Israel? This is a very important question that uh, uh, could have been addressed and that needs to be addressed in order uh, to, if we want to find out the solution. First of all, we should be having in mind about there are more than 7 lakh and 26,000 Palestinians that were expelled or fled uh, uh, their homes in 1948 in the war that followed the creation of the Israel. And in addition, Palestinians fled in 1967 in the later of, uh, in the later part of the interview, I'll be telling you about the timelines. Uh, there are now about 4 million Palestinian refugees. Many of them lived in the crowded refugee camps in the poor conditions in the West Bank of Gaza, in Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and Iraq. Palestinians demand these refugees should have the right to return to their homes in Israel and under the United Nations General Assembly Resolution that is 194. Israelis uh, note that an almost equal number of the Jews fled Arab lands to Israel in 1948. Israelis oppose even return of the refugees because that would create an Arab-Palestinian um, majority and would put an uh, end to the Israel as a Jewish state. So the area of the Israel within uh, its pre-1967 uh, armistice border is slightly less than, uh, than 8,000 square miles. Uh, the inhabitants, uh, you can say, and the distance from the Tel Aviv, that is a city, uh, to the Green Line border of the Israel West Bank is about 11 miles. Tel Aviv, as I've told you, the cities and are within the artillery range of the Palestinian state. So they have their geostrategic importance in um, 
uh, that kind. Uh, so talking about the originally formed to regain all the Palestinians for the Palestinian Arabs, the Palestinian Liberation Organize, uh, Organizations signaled that it would accept two-state solution. We are talking about solution, so we're coming to the two-state solution. So it was accepted as two-state solution in back in 1988. Uh, the Oslo Accord were supposed to have led a peaceful resolution of the conflict, but the continued Israeli settlements and the Palestinian violence and the incitement degenerated and opened the conflict in September 2000. Uh, may, talking about the mainstream Palestinians, demand uh, they demand a state in the West Bank and Gaza. Right-wing Israelis are opposed to the creating a state because they claim it would be a base for a terror group, which they consider Muslims of the Palestine as a terrorist. In the final status of the negotiation, the Israeli government uh, had agreed to a uh, demilitarized Palestinian state with a limited control over the borders uh, and the resources uh, the state uh, have owned. This, uh, coming uh, more towards the two-state solution, the two-state solution envisions an autonomous Palestinian state coexisting with Israel. The two states for the two people, in fact, is the motto of uh, the two-state solution. In principle, this would give Israel the stability while allowing it to maintain a Jewish demographic majority, allowing the country to remain Jewish and democratic. So this is they have as a two-state solution. Talking about the world powers, the United States of America, the United Nations, the Palestinian authorities, and the Israelis are the, amongst the governments and the international organizations that have made uh, achieving a two-state uh, solution a uh, priority. But for decades, this goal has served as a foundation for peace and talks. But today, when we see the situation, the situation has uh, no more improved, or rather it has further deteriorated. Um, in a speech, uh, uh, the uh, Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, who has been uh, in the office since 2009 for a long time, um, uh, reportedly said that they are looking forward to the solutions and uh, they are, how, uh, however, their continued extent towards the West Bank and the settlement declared in 2015 that no withdrawals and no compromises will be made, though there is uh, a point of uh, two uh, state solutions. So this thing uh, stay, stays to be redundant, redundant you can say. Islam, uh, uh, talking about the Israel and Palestine combined are no bigger than South Africa. If we are talking about uh, the geography of uh, this uh, a small patch of land that has become the land of controversy, the land of the atrocities, the land of, the, uh, of uh, uh, conflict, the Israel and Palestine combined are no bigger than South Africa's Western Cape province and yet for such a small amount of land. The state solution seeks the establishment of Palestine state separate from the current Israeli state, so they can co uh, inhibit peacefully. Palestine itself is not one landmass; it should must be remembered. It is currently divided into two territories, named the West Bank and the Gaza, respectively. But the uh, two-state solution has not yet provided us uh, so far any address to the problem. The Palestine. Uh, the people of Palestine were facing. Sir, can you please tell about the sense of self-determination in international law and in international relations, keeping in view uh, the Palestinian conflict? Uh, first of all, I would like to apologize for uh, the backlight that has uh, uh, just failed because of the power failure at my and because of the bad weather conditions. So apologies uh, to the uh, take, uh, videos uh, for the background. Coming back to the, your question about the sense of self-determination in international law. Self-determination is a very wide concept and uh, it gives the people legal right to determine their own fate, uh, that how they are going to exist in the international order. Self-determination is a central concept of the international law that stems from the customary international law, but uh, is also accepted as a general principle of law and uh, it is also enshrined in many international treaties. Talking about the customary international law for those who are not from the background of the international law, uh, customary international law is the kind of international law that has been derived from the repeated usages of customs. So uh, the General Assembly has acknowledged and reaffirmed the alienable, the alienable right of uh, the people of Palestine for the first time since the United Nations became interested in the Palestine 
uh, question in 1969. However, once the General Assembly became involved in the issue, it regularly and frequently reaffirmed the Palestinian people the right of self-determination to which they are to the date still facing. If I, if I remember, since being a youth st student of international relations, in 1970, the United Nations General Assembly reaffirmed previous demands for the Israelis' withdrawal from 1967 occupied territories in respect of for the refugees' right of the return and an end to the human right abuses, emphasizing the centrality of the Palestine problem in the Middle East, um, stating that it recognized the people of the Palestine are entitled to equal rights and self determination in accordance to the Charter of the United Nations. They declare that the full respect of, for the inalienable rights for the people of uh, Palestine is an indispensable element in the establishment of a just and lasting peace in the Middle East. So uh, the Arab Spring, the Arab-Israeli conflict, it, uh, it is very much important to sort out the matters that are taking place between the Israeli authorities and the Palestinians and the conflicts must be resolved at the earliest because it is directly correlated to the peace of the peace of the Middle East and the peace of the Middle East means the peace in the world. Uh, there are certain relevant resolutions recognizing the uh, people's right to self-determination re that reaffirms the Palestinian people's in in inalienable right. It re reaffirms the Palestinians uh, call for the return. It recreates the full respect for the realization of the Palestinian people's inalienable, inalienable rights uh, are uh, basically the essential for the resolving of the Palestinian questions. It also recognizes the Palestinian people as the principal party in establishing an in establishment of a just and long lasting peace in the Middle East. There would be no peace until or unless there is a, a amicable resolution of the dispute these two states, these two nations are facing. One is the Israeli is, and the other is the Palestinians. As, and as a result of which, and when we are talking about the self-determination, as a result to that, the Palestinian people's right to self-determination, which was denied three decades before, uh, uh, was during the mandate and ignored for two decades in the United Nations has uh, been constantly recognized and asserted by the uh, prepotent authorities, uh, you can say majority of the United Nations member states acting primarily through the same organs, the General Assembly over the last decade. But the Israeli settlement policy of the Palestine land is a serious human rights violation. We must uh, say and we must declare and we must raise our voice at every forum that it is the human rights violation. It is uh, uh, the denial to the rights of the living and the right to live peacefully. No one may be deprived of their property forcefully. And uh, what you have seen in the recent incident, they have been uh, evicted out, out of their homes in order to settle uh, without uh, keeping in view their rights to self-determination. They have been evicted, expelled from their homes to settle the Israeli population into those areas. So uh, the world needs to take serious measures and consider the Israeli Muslims as the equal human beings, as there are people living in the States, Middle East, uh, uh, or uh, Australia or, or in any developed uh, country, they are equally human. So it doesn't matter that uh, they are either Palest uh, Palestinians or the Kashmiris, they have got the right of self-determination that how, where, and in under what circumstances they are going to live. So what are your analysis of the recent um, reprehensible and inexcusable attacks and the escalation of violence uh, were perpetrated by Israeli authorities. On At the beginning of uh, the interview, we were discussing about uh, the attack that uh, has been made on the Holy Mosque of Aqsa, Batal Muqaddas, and uh, the people, the innocent people living there. As a person, as a student of law, my sentiments are hurt. And I am deeply moved and, and my words cannot explain the feelings I have for those people and for those kids who have lost their parents and the parents who have lost their children. For what? At the cost of what? For the reluctance of the powers to determine or amicably resolve their dispute. This is not uh, how the world orders or the developed world um, operates for uh, its people. 
the recent attack on the holy mosque of aqsa has um, uh, it was a complete brutal show off of the israeli forces against the palestinians i might say and it is a truth that the jews are following the same footsteps as the hitler did in the world war 2 during the era of uh, you know, from 1941 to 1945 what i don't understand that one one hand why these people are so sensitive that genocide of the jews and the holocaust and on the other hand they are complete insensitive to the palestinians who were peacefully praying at the night of lailatul qadr are there are, are there no religious sentiments are the religions not equally respected in my side israel is a terrorist state that they are going to the international laws they are uh, abridging the international laws and using complete force to take over the palestine if we compare the kashmir issue and the israel the palestine issue both of them are quite similar it's complete abuse of the human rights that is perpetrated by the israeli authorities over the palestinians the recent talking about uh, the recent irreprehensible and the inexcusable attacks the words you have particularly used they are very good words and these are the words that i have earlier uh, used while writing a letter to prime minister imran khan um uh, this act of violence perpetrated by the israeli authorities on palestinians the ongoing systematic issues associated with the siege of gaza and the uh, occupation of the expansion of the israeli settlement israeli security forces have attacked the worshippers at al aqsa this is no small thing uh, talking about uh, when we are talking about the naya pakistan and the leadership of the prime minister imran khan unequi- unequivocally unequivocally for the human rights and acknowledging the realities on the ground pakistan must continue to fall behind uh the international allies who have issued the stronger statements and do something for our muslims brother brother and sisters over there and uh, uh the situation um uh, of the palestinian or the kashmiris uh, are facing at the worst of the humanitarian crisis they have seen in the entire history israel's campaign to forcefully evict the palestinian families from the homes they have lived in for decades to make room for the israeli settlers in the sheikh jarrah and the east jerusalem has been condemned by the united nations and many other world leaders before but where do they stand where the world leaders stand if they are if what they have promised is not uh, getting executed talking about the east jerusalem remains an un remains an occupied territory un unmanned you can say uncontrolled and uh, there has been the flagrant violation of the basic human rights but also the violation of Uh, the international law and all associated norms and protocols accepted by the world so we can say giving my analysis uh, declaring israel as a state one should uh, be very much aware about uh, what are uh, the constituents that make up a state when they are not respecting your international laws international promises the united nations the conventions the treaties they have ratified so what what is the point of being a state and uh, declaring yourself to be a state so this is my analysis that what what's been uh, being done is going to have a very deep repercussions for the future and the world at large the international leaders and the international forum must ensure that these atrocities must be catered and stopped at the very moment so we can just avoid any further escalation of uh, the deterioration in any kind of the environment between the west and the east and the muslims and other religion because we all believe in the interfaith harmony and uh, respecting each other's religion and and uh, this this is what declaration of uh, on human rights uh, focuses on so what role uh, can united nations play to stop the israeli forces from killing of innocent children women and other united nations united nations is not playing any role uh, to stop the killing of the innocent children in palestine there are videos there are infographs there are pictures there are disturbing pictures palestine was a state that gave israeli people the refugee and now those israeli people are taking over the palestine by force ironically the united nations and the human rights organizations are very active when it comes to the hanging of criminals in the public but united nation is not giving any statement 
uh, against the Israelis uh, inflicted uh, atrocities. Instead, they are promoting their relationship with Israel. United Nations should actively take part, if we're talking about the United Nations, to stop Israeli invasion in Palestine on uh, the very expeditious ground. But I believe behind these uh, curtains, the United Nations is supporting the Israel's view of greater Israel. Uh, and uh, anyone, if it is not, it is not me only. Anyone uh, from the international relations or uh, anyone who uh, who's a student of international law can easily uh, sense it. Uh, you can say, and whenever a decision is passed in favor of Palestine, you must have noticed it is vetoed by the United States of America. United Nations is working for the refugee problems, but UN could have done more as being the major global organization. If the United Nations is failing to do so. So we all are well aware of the fact that what came, what is the reason that United Nations came into being? Because the League of Nations failed to maintain the peace and prosperity uh, within uh, the states and for which the World War I uh, occurred, World War II happened, and um, you know a lot about it. So that was basically the failure of the United Nations. If the United Nations has failed and cannot deliver what it has promised and the declaration and the treaties that has been rectified. Uh, so I don't think so that the uh, United Nations can hold the emblem um, to declare itself as the, as the major world organization to hold uphold the peace. And uh, talking about the UN, it could have done more than being a major global organization. UN peacekeeping forces should not had let it happen on the very first uh, on the very first time, to be honest. And if it sincerely supports the Palestinians, the international law clearly states that annexation by any occupying force is illegal. In March 2014, Russia annexed Crimea and faced sanctions from the government all around the world. Israelis are no different, and they should be uh, prosecuted in the same manner as the Russia was. Uh, prosecuted for uh, uh, for Crimea. Yes, sir. Sir, thank you so very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me on board and it was a wonderful session with you.